Tim is ready? Yeah. Are we ready to go? Yes. Thanks, gentlemen. Commissioner. Well, thank you for coming along. At about 9.30 this morning, um, a grass fire started in the Cuddley Creek area, and due to the nature of the weather conditions that we're experiencing today, that fire has the potential to impact upon a wide area of the Adelaide Hills. As the State Coordinator under the Emergency Management Act, um, I've deemed it appropriate that we call a press conference to emphasise the serious nature of this fire and the potential impact, and to ensure people are in a position to take appropriate action. I'd urge everybody who is in this area to closely monitor ABC radio alerts and keep an eye on the CFS website as well to keep informed of what's occurring. There is another fire that is being taken very seriously in the Angle Vale area and it's heading towards Hillier and we'd encourage people in that district to also pay attention to emergency alerts and the CFS website and listen to ABC radio. If you have a bushfire plan, we are encouraging you to enact that now and take the necessary actions, but in doing so, we would also warn people to be mindful of the severe weather conditions and the current heat wave that we're experiencing and take that into account. I'd like to hand over to the CFS Chief now, Mark Jones, who will give some further detail on the current situation with the fires. Between 8 o'clock and 12 o'clock this morning, the Country Fire Service received calls to 28 significant fires. Two fires continue to give us concern, as the Commissioner has just indicated. One is the Angle Vale fire and the other is the Cudley Creek fire. Six of the state's weather districts remain in catastrophic fire danger rating through this afternoon. The remainder are in severe or extreme, creating an emergency across the state. A dry lightning storm is expected ahead of the change in late afternoon, which gives the further potential for numerous spontaneous fires to commence. Aerial resources have been tasked from New South Wales and Victoria to support those we already have in state, and approximately 500 firefighters are in the field firefighting at this time. The Cudley Creek fire is burning in terrain in which it's particularly difficult to firefight, and in the current conditions is unlikely to be controlled rapidly. The Angle Vale fire is a grass fire moving quickly, and early reports are properties may have been impacted. On the Cudley Creek fire, there are, pro there are reports that spot fires are starting to affect near the vicinity of Lobethal, and our crews will work over the next few hours to try to create a defensive fire line on the western side of Lobethal. I would echo the Commissioner's words. Remain alert and vigilant. Listen to ABC Radio Go to the Country Fire Service website and, if you haven't already, download the Alert SA app. People in the Lobethal and Mount Torrens area are encouraged to be particularly vigilant this afternoon. Thank you. Well, as the uh, Commissioner said, we are in a, a period of extreme heat wave, and uh, at the end of four days of uh, extraordinary heat, we've seen a number of um, weather temperature records broken across the state. We currently have 10 weather districts under extreme heat wave conditions and five under severe heat wave conditions. And understandably, there's been a number of uh, human and environmental and infrastructure impacts associated uh, with these conditions. Indeed, over the last three days, there's been uh, a significant increase in ambulance movements, uh, hospital presentations and uh, hospital admissions. The government has uh, its Telecross Ready Service activated, providing outreach to uh, vulnerable clients. Uh, we've also enacted the Code Red protocol, which provides additional uh, support for rust sleepers and the homeless, with uh, extra space available in Westcare overnight and extra services through Tracer Place and Hutt Street Centre. I'd like to remind all South Australians uh, during these conditions to remain vigilant, stay hydrated and, wherever possible, stay out of the heat. It's really important, too, that all South Australians take time to uh, check on family, friends and neighbours particularly those who may be vulnerable. And as the cool change comes in on the weekend, I'd encourage all South Australians to continue those checks because we do know that the uh, ED presentations and the hospitalisation rates continue for a number of days uh, following the uh, cool change coming through. Most South Australians will be hard pressed not to notice the, uh, the dust and smoke in the air and uh, I'd encourage all South Australians who are on the roads to take extreme caution, particularly where there's reduced visibility. In terms of the heat uh, for the rest of the day and, and into Saturday, um, 
I'd like to uh, remind uh, everyone not to forget about their pets. Um, they need plenty of water and uh, shade to survive these conditions. And uh, we've also seen over the last 48 hours an increase in the number of call-outs for SES volunteers, CFS volunteers and Metropolitan Firefighters to incidents involving trees down and limbs falling. These types of conditions cause large trees to stress and I caution anybody working in and around large trees to exercise extreme vigilance and caution. Thank you. Question please. Mark, can you please elaborate on the difficulties the firefighters are currently facing at Cuddly Creek, particularly with the uh, smoke and the aerial firefighting A number of challenges in the terrain they have. They've got uh, a number of gradients on which the fire fight, fire's burning uphill and cross, cross hillsides, uh, which means access is very difficult and dangerous for firefighters. The lack of visibility due to the wind blowing the smoke sideways makes it very difficult for people to locate themselves in the fire risk area and it's very difficult to apply normal firefighting techniques such as water bombing in uh, heavily, heavily wooded and upslopes and terrain. What kind of effect could a dry atmosphere in those uh, Multiple ignitions in areas which aren't burning at the moment would be our main concern. Mm. Uh, the, our resources are finite and we can only get them on a, a certain number of fires. The fact that the crews expertly put so many fires out quickly this morning enabled us to get a lot of hands on the jobs which remain of concern to us. But of course, multiple fires have got to be tackled as best we can. Uh, can just elaborate for those who don't understand what the cool change will do this afternoon, pushing the obviously the what would be the eastern flank of the head of the fire, and the challenges that that will present to your firefighters later today. Okay, stronger winds are always a bigger challenge for us. We're already in catastrophic due to the temperature multiplied by the winds so that it increases the effect upon the fire, makes them travel more quickly, and of course creates more risk to the communities and to our fire crews. Mark, can you um, elaborate how you uh, concerned about threats to significant townships like Labour Falls and the like? Um, are, are there any particular concerns about heavily populated areas being affected? Uh, at this time, we don't have information of heavily populated areas being affected. However, people who live in that area need to remain alert because the fire is burning in that vicinity and is not yet under control. And can you tell us a bit more about the resources coming in from Victoria and New South Wales? We've commissioned a large aerial tanker from New South Wales, which arrived around 10 o'clock this morning and was immediately tasked to the fire in the Adelaide Hills. The further one was requested from Victoria a couple of hours ago, which should be here around now. So you talked before a little bit about possible uh, properties being affected uh, by the Angle Bale fire. Do you have any rough indication of numbers yet, or still far too early? To None at all, far too early. Commissioner Stevens, the associations uh, warned truck drivers on the southeastern freeway to prepare for the, the southeast freeway might be closed. Is there any truth to that? Is that, is that a potential? Warning? No, that's a, that's a, a wise warning to be putting out at this time. Uh, we're monitoring traffic flows and the impact of smoke and potential fire risk uh, for uh, vehicle movement through the Adelaide Hills and also including the southeastern freeway. And uh, we'd be encouraging people to. Uh, uh, source information before they start off on any journey at this point in time. Uh, it's, it's important to point out that this is a dynamic and fast changing situation that we're dealing with and it's not possible to accurately forecast the direction or fire prediction. So we're encouraging everybody in the Adelaide Hills area to be very vigilant and to take on as much information as they can and um, activate their bushfire plans accordingly. This includes travel through the Adelaide Hills and checking that public transport is still available. Um, at this point in time, um, we just have people keep in mind the fact that you know, there are some 300,000 people live in the Adelaide Hills area, not all of them in heavily populated areas. So the impact for people to be affected by this fire is substantial. What's the situation with evacuation centres? Uh, we have, um, uh, people should be aware of their refuge of last resort, uh, know where that is and make plans to move to that if that's something that they need to consider and relief centres are also being set up in the event that people are affected or unable to return to their home addresses uh, whilst we're dealing with this current incident. Where are these centres? Uh, there's a relief centre uh, established at the Taramara Recreation Centre for the, um, the, the Cudley Creek fire and uh, uh, further considerations are being uh, worked through at the moment in terms of other relief centres that may be necessary for that particular geographic location and there is a relief centre for the um, Anglevale fire as well. More general road safety. One we're seeing a lot of raised dust up in the mid north and on Hill Peninsula. Um, obviously, creating dangerous driving conditions. What yeah. would your message be to those people who are currently travelling in that area? Yeah, weather conditions such as this um, and with the 
prevailing fire threat uh, means that we do face a risk of dust and smoke haze, uh, which will obstruct vision. And as with our regular messaging about road safety, we just encourage people to drive to the, to the conditions and consider whether that trip is actually necessary. So uh, please uh, take every precaution is our message to everybody using the roads. Mark, you mentioned at the start that some assets may have been affected uh, already. No, I can't. Uh, I said early reports are that some may have been affected by spot fires. That's all the only information I have at this stage. How much fire fighting resources got into asset protection uh, this morning? Uh, as opposed to working patrols? They're always combined efforts on the ground. The first, the first instinct is asset protection and then firefighting and attack if that's viable. So uh, it's difficult for me to answer what proportion has happened on the ground this morning. I can confirm no reports of that at this stage. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.